Howdy, y'all. Hi, guys. It's Ryan. And Angela. From RNA Music. <laughs> Your favorite <laughs> mom and pop guitar shop and music lesson studio. And, you know, YouTube creators. In Texas. Deep in the heart of Texas. That's my Texas. It's not big enough. It should be like a million times bigger. Yeah. Well, if the world is this big. That would be about right. That would be right. <laughs> <laughs> the planet should be Texas sized. It's high size. Um, yeah, and it's uh, time for Ask RNA. Yay! So let's get to it. Welcome to our channel. If you're new here, please hit the subscribe button because I think you're going to like our videos, hopefully. And if you don't, you can always unsubscribe later, I suppose. Mm -hmm. But you won't. And uh, if you're already a subscriber and you already watch our videos on the regs, mm -hmm. then just hit that bell button. You'll get notified of all our new all videos. All of them. All of them. There's like one a week or sometimes two. Something like that. Something, but uh, I don't know. Uh, if you're missing our vlog videos, mm -hmm. you haven't seen one, we have a new vlog channel just for that stuff. Yeah. And the link's in the description. You can go check that out. Yeah. Um, but otherwise, we're going to get to our video topic today, which is answering questions from all y'all out there in the world, from all over. Yes. Uh, so let's... People all over the world. <laughs> let's answer the first question. All right, here we go. Okay. First question, the Penny Wisdom, hashtag beards. Yes. It's so a happy birthday, Ryan. <laughs> oh my gosh, it almost does look like it's a beard. Kinda, it's very beardy. Oh gosh, okay. Thank yeah. you. My birthday was this past Monday. It was. I am now older. Yes, he is. And I had cake. It was good. Cookie cake. Cookie cake. It was actually really good. Mm -hmm. um, hashtag Ask RNA. Do you guys enjoy or find inspiration from 1950s rock and roll? So many guitar players are obsessed with the 60s through the 80s. Mm -hmm. But the 50s had such great sounds and were a great foundation for what came after. I loved Orbison, Eddie Cochran, Carl Perkins, and Elvis. Not just a cliche. He was amazing. Uh, and I feel like this music is being forgotten. I'm a millennial, so I missed it the first time around, but it sounds great even now. Thoughts? Yeah. Um, you know, I'm not real big into the 50s stuff. Mm -hmm. You know? I mean, I know some Elvis Presley songs. Those would probably be the only ones I could just name if they came on the radio. Oh, it's Elvis or whatever, you know? Yeah. Or maybe some Roy Orbison. But not, like, early Orbison. It would be, like, 80s Orbison. That's what I... I'm familiar with. No, I know the fifties. Oh, do you? I mean, I I can when I hear it in my head, I couldn't. I probably couldn't name a song. I probably know it, but I don't know it. So I'm not like learned on all fifties music. Yeah. And people, because sometimes like early sixties and late fifties kind of bled into each other a little yeah, bit. Yeah. They kind of bled. So in. sometimes whenever I think I'm saying the fifties music, really I'm thinking sixties. Yeah. And really, when you think of 50s, it's like Mr. Sandman, <laughs> you know, and like um, all those really like poppy stuff. Pop. Well, yeah, it's like, I always think of like bubble gum, like soda jerk. Do, do, do. Yeah, stuff like that. Like whenever you think of like drag racing and. Yeah. Like 1950s. Yeah. Like I think, like my mom was born in 56. My dad was born in 47, but my mom was born in 56. And when I think of stuff that she, she remembers as a little girl, because she was only like four, yeah. you know, when 1960 hit. So yeah. I think of stuff like that. But I do love that era, you know, of that kind of music. Or what was that movie with Reese Witherspoon? Whenever her and her brother get sucked into the television. Toby Maguire. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's mm -hmm. Toby Maguire. I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, but that was they got sucked into the fifties. The fifties. Like late fifties, because it was start. It was on the verge of like the sexual revolution into mm -hmm. the sixties mm -hmm. because everything was about to just explode with. <coughs> you're Vietnam going from War. leave it to Beaver to Vietnam. It, exactly, exactly to peace, love, dope. <laughs> <laughs> peace, love, and. Drugs. I think of like when I said that. I think of uh, James Earl Jones in in. Um, Field of Dreams, oh. whenever he's trying to get him to the field, and he's like, I want you to report on this, because he wrote the article about this guy he's trying to find, and he was like, get out of here, you hippie! He's like, peace, love, dope! And he slams the door in here <laughs> to hear James Earl Jones say that. It was awesome. You mean Darth Vader. Darth Vader, yes, say that is awesome. But that's, that, like, in my mind, that's what I think of 
in you mm. know the 50s that type of music so I think it has a huge influence um, sure m I'm gonna say her name wrong cuz I'm not a f big fan I don't Megan trainer is that right? Megan Trainer. Megan? That sounds right. Okay. Me I, Megan. 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 I won't say either Morgan or Megan, but Me I think Megan Me is right. Mahagan. Mahagan. Um, a trainer, she is trying to bring that kind of bubble gum. And I think her name is Izzy? Izzo? Li Lizzo? Lizzo. Lizzo. I don't know. See, I'm not hip. I'm a goober mama. You're not into crap. <clears throat> they're trying to bring that style back, mm -hmm. but they're doing it in such a trashy way. I'm sorry. It's horrible. But they they want to bring that kind of like that, you know, yeah. bubble gummy, like girl dancing, like um, uh, Diana Ross and the Supremes type, because mm -hmm. that was like late 50s, early 60s type stuff. Um, but they're doing it very poorly because Diana Ross would not wear what they're wearing <laughs> or dance yeah. like how they're dancing. <laughs> they use... wore ball gowns <laughs> and nice yeah. dresses covered up to here with gloves. <laughs> Don't use your undies for evil. Yes. <laughs> <clears throat> but yeah, I think it has a huge influence. I think more than actually young people realize because it laid a groundwork from going from... Um, of course, 1920s jazz gave birth to a lot of really cool transitional music in the 30s. And then mm -hmm. the 40s is when they started really trying to break out of radio and movies were getting their traction and they were going into um, variety shows. And of course, you have I Love Lucy and a lot of songs that people... It's just... I think that the groundwork from the uh, music from the 30s, 40s, and 50s um, play a bigger... Um, role than most people mm -hmm. understand or realize. I'm not really like to just sit and listen to music from the 50s. Like I'm going to put on this record and listen to it. So yeah. I'm not like a, bi a big fan of that. But music is cyclical. Like it always comes back around. Everything, mm -hmm. everything is gets cyclical. redone. You know, and so the, it'll it'll come about again to where that style mm -hmm. will get popular for a hot minute, and then people yeah. will go and look. Where did this come from? Well, this is just an Elvis song, or oh, right. let me go find that, you know. Well, just like whenever um, Harry Connick Jr. brought back the Rat Pack sound, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, and then Mel, uh, Michael Bublé kept it kind of yep. going. He yep. passed the torch, not literally, but in musically, <clears throat> they passed the torch to Michael Bublé, who's kept it going. Mm -hmm. um, well, and blues is still like a thing, and it's been around since mm -hmm. like the twenties. Yeah, you know. Now I find that real interesting, personally. I'm like, I need to go back and listen to some of these really old blues dudes, yeah. like the original guys. You know that everything Led Zeppelin stole everything from. Yes, I think of the color purple when they were they have that juke joint in uh -huh. the, like in the swamp, and the guys are on the piano and the girls singing just this like, you know. I want to go back and really listen to a lot more of that because I've been talking about the blues a lot with some of our students. Just mm -hmm. in that, not that we're real big into blues, but. A lot of them are into pop music and rock music and country music. I'm like, man, this all has its roots in the blues, right? And so we're going to go take a look at the structure of like 12 bar blues. Why is it called 12 bar blues and why, right. how do they do it? Because that's basically the foundation for everything that we have done since then. Mm -hmm. And if you understand those early foundations, when you look at something now, it's kind of like, oh, this makes sense. Oh, this is, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's just a, a build. We're building upon the previous, you know, foundation. So. I agree. So I'm like, you know, I need to go back and listen to the, listen, because I'm a rock guy. And I, I like 70s stuff, you know, particularly, probably more than 60s stuff. But like, you know, Zeppelin and Sabbath are like a big thing for me. I'm like, man, they just stole all their stuff from these earlier musicians. I'm like, I need to go they back. They were influenced. Influenced. They were influenced. Sabbath was influenced. Zeppelin stole it. Yeah. And were influenced. Mm -hmm. but I still love Led Zeppelin. Mm -hmm. But, you know. But it'll all come back around. It so will. I don't think people will... Not everyone forget. Somebody will go on a search mission to go find. I wonder what music was like 60 years ago. Mm -hmm. And they'll go check it out on the internet. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Thanks for the question, Penny Wisdom. What did you guys and gals watch and think? Are y'all into 50s music? 50s guitar players specifically, as we're probably mostly guitarists mm -hmm. watching on this channel. Mm -hmm. um, and what are your thoughts on older generations of music? Tell us. All right, next question. Dave Weiss, hashtag beard. I was curious about what you folks like for guitar straps and or strap locks. I generally use Ernie Ball leather straps that aren't in production anymore. 
And I've always been a fan of Dunlop strap locks. Okay, okay. great question. Awesome. I brought the wrong guitar over for this, but I have some very I have various straps I like to yes, use. You do. I prefer leather straps, mm -hmm. and I have several. Um, <laughs> this one, um, oh man, I forgot the company. That it. <laughs> I'll go grab it real quick. <laughs> I had to go grab one. It's Levies. Levies. This is a Levies strap. That it's like garment leather, mm -hmm. both sides. The thing it's I love. Nice and soft and pliable. Yeah. The thing I love about this one is the adjustment. It's one of these little slider guys. Mm -hmm. So it's super easy to adjust the length on. Would you say it was barely an inconvenience? Super easy. Barely, slightly an inconvenience because it is a little hard to, to slide. Okay. But you know, so it's not going to slip on you. But it's it's a slight inconvenience. Mm -hmm. But it's much easier than most other leather straps are to adjust. Mm -hmm. So I have about three of these guys. Mm -hmm. uh, one I've had for a really long time. And they're really comfortable. I really like them. I think James Hetfield used to use them. Oh, okay. Sure. <laughs> Which makes a lot of sense. But I like these. This has uh, the D'Addario strap locks on it. Um, which is maybe not my favorite. Yeah. I like them. And I have, I think these, I have, I have these on three guitars. The D'Addario mm -hmm. strap locks. Yeah. Uh, but almost all my others have Dunlop dual design, dual design strap locks. So a significant number of my guitars have the Dunlop dual design. And so I tend to, I like those a lot. I've never really had them fail on me. So, you know, people complain about them. Like, dude, I've had them on my Explorer for 25 years. Yeah. And they've never failed on me. So look at this, look at this Schecter, super sexy. Okay. I'm not a Levy's dealer though, so like we don't carry Levy's straps mm -hmm. here in the store. And so I, you know, as much as I like those and I really do, um, we are however a Dunlop dealer and I have been getting these Dunlop straps. Now this is the fat boy right? or the wide boy, <clears throat> mm -hmm. the beefy boy. I don't know. It's like three and a half inches, like a four inch strap, which I really like. It's the garment leather on one side. Feel it. Mm. Touch it. Yeah. Oh. And suede. Suede on the other, which I like these a lot. Now the problem is it's got the little threaded mm -hmm. thing. So if you want to change the link on it, and mine's all janky here at the bottom. But if you want to change the length of the strap, you gotta undo it all and like re-thread it and do all this other stuff. It's a little bit more pain in the butt to adjust mm -hmm. the length on. Mm -hmm. um, but I usually kind of get them set and then leave them. Yep. And I'm a weirdo that you know for every guitar that I have. Mm -hmm. I buy a strap. <laughs> so instead of having one strap, you know, for multiple guitars, I have a strap for every guitar. Yeah. I see it's like, you know, every pair of shoes you got, it's got its own shoelaces. Mm -hmm. You don't just interchange them. <laughs> it would be way more difficult. It would. But um, lately for myself, I've been using the um, the Dunlop ones and then, of, of course, the um, Heatherax. Mm -hmm. straps which we are a dealer for tether axe straps as well mm -hmm. i like those i have those on two of my guitars i think um they're you know, they're oh. like at their maximum length they're on the top end of where i like to wear them okay and so that's the thing like with the dunlop and the with the levies it's longer than you would ever need like you could make it so long you couldn't play the guitar so mm -hmm. super great I like that. The tether axe, I love them, but at, right now, until they get the, their their <laughs> adjusters, the Buddha belly mm -hmm. adjustment strap, which I find mildly offensive, because sometimes people are just big and tall, and not necessarily round. And sometimes we're big and tall and round. But anyways, so they're working on the tether axe ones, making them a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. um, so I like those. And then, of course, the Dunlop strap locks are probably probably my preferred because mm -hmm. they're on most of my guitars. Yeah. There you go. Thanks for the question, Dave. What do you guys and gals like? Mm -hmm. What's your favorite strap? What's your favorite strap lock? Let us know. Next question. Big Johnson. That made me laugh because I immediately thought of the t-shirts. The t-shirts, and there's one. My neighbor oh, nice. in high school. 
Steve, his name is Steve. South, Steven South. Mm -hmm. Steven South mm -hmm. <laughs> is always wearing Big Johnson t-shirts. <laughs> Isn't that funny? He played the trumpet, he was in the band, and he wore Big Johnson t-shirts. That's what I remember about Steve. Yeah. But his brother had a super sweet 68 Camaro that he built from scratch or nice. rebuilt. And I was like, Michael uh -huh. South had a Camaro. Anyways, Big Johnson, have you seen the Glary guitars shipped to your front door for under $85? Hmm. If so, what's your thoughts and opinion on them? Hashtag beards. Awesome. Uh, Big Johnson, I have not. That seems vaguely familiar, though. Like, I feel like I've seen Is videos it like those pop up. box things that you, like, subscribe to? I don't think so. Um. I think it's just a really cheap guitar. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Like, I've seen a few videos, like, cheapest guitar you could buy on Wish. Cheapest guitar you could buy on Amazon. Uh -huh. like Fluff has done some of these. And uh -huh. I feel like I've seen that name pop up in a few videos, but I can't remember if I actually watched them or not. Right. But I'm like, I can't imagine for $85, though, it would be a phenomenal guitar. We should try this. We should. Can I? We should get 85 bucks and get one and see what happens. Yeah. That would be a good video. It would. What if we said, there's a crap. That's all that's their but fault. But it's $85. It's, 85 not, bucks. it's not going to, you know. That is literally like 85 Totino's pizzas. <laughs> like we could eat pizza for a month uh -huh. or two. You know how many Pony Espresso coffee I could buy for $85? Three. Three. Uh, <laughs> that wasn't scripted. That was in your mind. That was, that was, that was like, in your brain. You're in my brain. <laughs> that was intense. Yeah, we're we're like this. <laughs> we're connected. Um, yeah, that might be fun. We should maybe do that. That would be that would be a good video mm -hmm. for 2020, as we're wrapping up 2019 now. Maybe we'll do that. And uh, yeah, <laughs> see what is. Yeah. Thanks, I, Big Johnson. Thanks for the uh, suggestion. I can't imagine they would be super fantastic for that 85 bucks. But again, your expectations aren't going to be that high. Well, yeah. So it I'm doesn't matter what it it's to be so, yeah exactly. Hmm, good question. We should find it's like that a out. kind of guitar that you can sand down if it's pliable. You know, learn to do your own and do, repairs yeah, on you can, or exactly. You can learn how to burn wood, wood burn. on it. <gasps> Stop getting in my brain. <laughs> wood burn. <laughs> oh my god. What is up with us today? I don't know. We're like this. <laughs> it's the power of the doctor. It's not it's the Dr. Pepper. What are, you, what are you drinking? No. What am I drinking? What is it? Do you have a label? Yeah. It does. Ah. It makes you think the same. Uh, all right. If you guys have tried those, uh, I'm going to go Google it. Google it here in a little bit, I guess. Maybe we'll see about ordering one for 85 yeah. bones and just do a review. <laughs> yeah. Um, but thank you so much. If you guys have one, let us know. Next question. Terry Starks. Hi, Terry. Bring in the next question. Hi, Terry. How are you, man? It's great to see y'all's equipment. Mm -hmm. I love photography, so my question is, do you use your camera for just y'all's YouTube channels and vlogs, etc., or do you take your bearded self out and take stills of the family portraits or shots of that cosmopolitan Canton Township? <laughs> Hashtag beards. Thanks, y'all. Uh, yeah, actually... Uh, we do take the camera, the camera that we film Ask RNA with, we talked about last week, and it's just mm -hmm. a Canon T5i DSLR, you know, it's a great camera for mm -hmm. video. It's not made for video. It's not, it's right. primary purpose. It's primary it for well. photography, mm -hmm. but it does do a good job with the videos. So I do take it out sometimes when we're going to, mm -hmm. you know, we haven't done any family portraits with it. No. We, we should. We took it to the beach when we were in Georgia, and mm -hmm. we took pictures on the beach of us but we have not actually done like purposeful family portraits <clears throat> with it in yeah. the cosmopolitan of canton Texas. cosmopolitan township yeah. i have taken photos you know i do take photos of the gear like if i take pictures of the guitars you know mm -hmm. um to put on the website <laughs> yes which i haven't done in forever uh, but usually for instagram or our facebook page yeah um, or, you know, our reverb page, you know, our mm -hmm. listings on reverb, I'll have, I use it to take pictures of gear and stuff, but, mm -hmm. and every now and then I'll take pictures of the dogs. Right. You know, but, uh, it, I primarily bought it. The whole purpose was for upping our video game. Mm -hmm. Um, and then as a side note, sometimes use it for photography, but 
Not very often. Right. We yeah. should. I mean, it we does should. great, great photography stuff. Yeah. But now they say it's so easy to click on your phone, and your phones take good photos. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, especially to share. And let's get this up onto like instantly Instagram. Mm -hmm. I have taken videos specifically for Instagram mm -hmm. and for uh, and pictures for Instagram to go yeah. on the RNA Music Instagram page. If you don't follow us on Instagram, you really should. You really should go just type in RNA Music on Instagram, and you will find us. Yeah, we look like this. And there's guitars, mm -hmm. and uh, I do take um, photos, but it's a whole other process because I got to get it off the memory card of this camera into my computer, right. and then from my computer send that picture to myself on my phone, and then from my phone post it to Instagram. So yeah. it's, it's a little bit of a hassle, mm -hmm. but it does look great. Yes. So there you go, Terry. There's our camera rundown. There it is. Oop! There it is. There it is. All right. <laughs> Thanks for the question, man. Next question, Jeffrey Egan. I do have a question, however, this time. What are your thoughts on Eric Clapton? Personally, I think his, <laughs> his best playing, that's right, it's a good one, was in Cream when he was playing Gibson's. Mm. Mm. Controversial. I don't feel his Fender years are that impressive. Oh, dum -dum -dum. Those are fighting words, man. Oh, no. uh, with harshness. the exception of the pros and cons of pitch hacking with Roger Waters. Thoughts? That brings me to another point. My entire time of trying to play guitar frustrates me when I can't match the tone or sound of what I'm trying to play. Mm -hmm. My first guitar was a Fender, and everyone I loved pretty much played Gibsons, i.e. ACDC, Sabbath, etc. Do you get frustrated when you can't match someone's tone? Tone, tone, tone. Tone, tone, tone. <laughs> Two questions. All right. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on Eric Clapton? Angela, go. Um, I think he's great. I do not listen to him. Only because it's associated with a very bad relationship when, before I met him. Um, let's make that clear. Let's make that real clear right now. Um, anyways, I honestly, I have not listened to us other than Cream. Mm -hmm. um, and I can dissociate, disassociate, right? Dis disassociate. Disassociate. Cream with Eric Clapton's voice because it's not his voice. Yeah, it's only half his voice. Exactly. So kind of his voice. It's kind of, but it's it doesn't sound like what we're used to hearing yeah, yeah. of Eric Clapton. So I can kind of push that away and listen to Cream, but um, no, I haven't listened to Eric Clapton since '96. <laughs> we haven't ever really <laughs> talked about this. She's mentioned it a few times, and yeah. I'm like. So what I'm going to assume, this is what I've been thinking my whole life, because uh -huh. I've, never, I've never even asked you. Yeah. But I was like, I'm assuming you're a boyfriend, previously he was a giant a-hole. Yes. Must have really liked Eric Clapton. He loved. And played it all the time. All the time. Like driving in the car and stuff. It was Everywhere. always Clapton all the time. It was always Clapton. Like me and Metallica. Yes. No. More. Because you, oh. you don't sit, we don't sit in the car. We might, you might have a Metallica album playing like every once in a while in the car. But for the most part, you have a pretty good, reg, you know, revolving door of Music. albums that you mm -hmm. listen to. No, this was constantly. And so like there was a lot of very bad behavior on his part. And in the background, almost like a theme song was Eric Clapton's voice. <laughs> oh my gosh. So whenever I hear Eric Clapton singing, you know, like yeah. Tears in Heaven and Layla and uh, all like that whole entire album, like yeah, yeah. the album before and a that album and the album after. It's a great think. album. It was a great album and I loved it before that moment. And now every time I just feel like I'm back in his car or back at his apartment and I'm just like, I can't. Oh man. And I, I literally get actually like physically nauseous. Oh my gosh. Listening to mm, him. That's probably why we've never done one. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's the interesting point because that brings up how Which much. Which is sad because Eric Clapton's amazing. And I and I, I can say that. I right. just no, don't yeah. want to listen to him. Yeah, yeah. It's like watching E.T. It's yeah, yeah. The, it's like that level. Yeah. Yeah, for me. Rough. Yes. Because you know, we have we attach emotions to music. Like when I All listen to Master of Puppets, mm -hmm. I immediately feel like I'm back in my 1986 doo-doo brown truck with a white door and my Pioneer tape deck and I have my Master of Puppets tape in there because yeah. everywhere I drove mm -hmm. in that truck and this was in you know 1992 mm -hmm. I was driving an 86 pickup truck in 92 with a white door mm -hmm. uh, like I listened to that album so much mm -hmm. in that truck that when I hear a song from Master of Puppets I think of that truck yeah. I think of driving that truck in that that time period of my life which mm -hmm. would 
generally pretty happy thoughts. Yeah. You know? And I was like... Yeah. <laughs> when I think of Prince and um, his Purple Rain album, I think of being in Alabama with my cousins and dancing and jumping on the bed and laughing and putting on makeup and because we had so much fun. We listened to that whole entire album like over and over oh, and yeah. over and over again. Like the whole summer we... It was just like the best. So when I hear his anything Prince, I associate it yeah, yeah, with yeah. all the laughter and fun that me and my cousins had. You know, that's how it is for me with Def Leppard. Yeah, like is it Hysteria? I think it's Hysteria that has you know, pour some sugar on me and mm -hmm. all that other stuff. Yeah, and I'm off. <laughs> <laughs> that summer, it was like 1988. Yeah, or 89. I, was, I spent a week in New Braunfels, Texas, with my cousin Shane, mm -hmm. and we just built models like little tanks and airplanes we just spent the whole time building models and listening to that tape over and over and over mm -hmm. for an entire week that's yeah. all we listened to was Def Leppard so now I'm like yeah I feel like I'm in New Braunfels every time this song comes on I know okay so like negative emotions Completely. but not because he's a bad musician or anything no like that. not at all which I feel some bad other a-hole ruined Eric Clapton for he Eric did. Clapton yes stupid Eric Clapton. stupid um, and I have actually tried to remedy it and like listen to it and think of other things while I, and I can't, my body actually physically won't allow me to do it. You have to listen to more Cream then. Yes. Which, I, which I'm fine with. Because it's Jack Bruce singing half yes. the time. Yes. <laughs> um, I'm not like a mega, mega Clapton fan, obviously. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, we would have had mm -hmm. a problem <laughs> early yeah. on. Now, I like, you know, I tried to learn one or two of his songs. Like, when Tears in Heaven came out, like, that was really kind of cool, acoustic -y thing, mm -hmm. not not your typical Clapton thing you think of, you know, mm -hmm. guitar solos and stuff. And I thought it was a cool piece. And, you know, a couple of, like, Layla, you know, yeah. all those sort of classic hits, everybody is like, oh, man, you know. Yeah. And, like, but I don't think I, I think I maybe owned one Clapton CD mm -hmm. at some point in time in my mm -hmm. life. But mm -hmm. I'm not just like a, yeah. oh, man, he's the best. Yeah. He's great. I mean, yeah, he's awesome. Yeah. But it's not like no I doubt. just love Clapton and he's, he's the best guitar player or all that. I do like the older stuff, though, I think, more. Mm -hmm. like Cream. And there was like a, and I guess he's thinking, though, the pros and cons. I, like I said, I couldn't tell you any pros and cons of the difference between his Cream days versus his solo album record days. I can't. Yeah. Because I won't listen to him long enough to hear the difference. Because the early days he played Gibsons, and then he switched to Fenders, and he's kind of became synonymous with the Fender Strat. Mm -hmm. People get Fender Strats cause because Clapton, he played. Because mm -hmm. Clapton played a Strat. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, kinda, I, I tend to think of him as a Strat guy. <coughs> but, mm -hmm. <coughs> you know. Um, I'm a big fan. I've been listening to a lot of Cream lately. Yeah. And like, we should we should do one of their a couple of their songs with our students. I think would be fun, but... Yeah, you know. Yeah. There you go. There's there's our Clapton discussion. Uh, as far as the question about, do you get frustrated when you can't match someone's tone? I, no. Not too much. Yeah. I really don't. Now, I'm with you. Like, I I, I grew up playing Gibson guitars, or Gibson mm -hmm. style guitars, humbuckers, you know. And I, probably why I don't get along super great with single coil guitars like Strats and Tellys. Mm -hmm. that's not what I learned to play on and that's not kind of what my heroes in my formative years were playing for the most part mm -hmm. you know so um now I've played songs like it's like oh they recorded that with a single that's a Strat song I'm like I don't care I'm gonna play it on my Explorer <laughs> so like it doesn't bother me that it doesn't sound like a Strat when I'm playing it because I think humbuckers sound better so it doesn't really bother me too much and I, I don't get too zoned in I'm like I gotta match you know, the sound of this song just perfectly. Just I don't, you know. I watched an interesting video the other day. I can't remember whose channel it was on. It might have, might have been Rick Beato or something. And they were talking about, you know, the tone that these bands get in the studio. Mm -hmm. And that's the tone we're all chasing in our heads. Um, you know, that we want to get out of our amplifier and our guitar. And it's like, they don't even sound like that. Mm -hmm. Like when they play live, that's not even what it sounds like. Because your guitar plugged into your amp in this room is not going to sound like what it sounds like on a record or on an album after right. it's been processed and mixed and mastered. And so we're all chasing these mixed and mastered tones, which isn't even what that... If you were standing in the room when that it was in sound. front of the amp when that was recorded, that's not the sound that you're actually hearing right. 
on the album. So we're 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 chasing a process sound. Chasing a dream. So I thought, oh wow, yeah, that's really good. So I'm trying to nail this tone on this record. I'm like, well, do you have their recording console? Yeah. Do you have living their... in a dream world, Neo? <laughs> You've been living in a dream world. So I don't get too wrapped up in finding, you know, yeah, chasing someone else's tone. I'm a little more interested in like, hey, does it sound good? Mm -hmm. What's my tone? Right. And plugged into a Mesa Boogie is kind of mine with humbuckers. EMGs. I don't get super frustrated at that. You know, you can chase that. You can chase that dream if you want to, and you'll probably be super frustrated most of the time. Mm -hmm. I think you should just find a tone that works, and you know Enjoy that you don't yourself. hate, and go like, eh, "This works. Let's play," yeah. and just get down the plan. Keep on playing. Keep on playing. Quit chasing. Keep on keeping on. Yeah. So great questions, Jeffrey. Thank you so much for those. You guys, tell us your thoughts on that. <laughs> Do you love Eric Clapton? Do you hate him? Do you have strong emotions attached to a certain artist that you wish you didn't i think everybody does <laughs> they probably do one person or another that would be those would be great stories to to hear so mm -hmm. you guys let us know in the comments next question just fun guitar with multiple questions yes hello youtube buttes so. one butte and a beast anyways thank you for your answers ktma hashtag beards new questions angela and ryan what are your abs what is your absolute favorite question on an Ask RNA so far. Ryan, have you used mm. the TV Jones Filtertrons and what you make of them? Three, is there a good zoo in Texas? And if so, have you visited? All it? the animal questions from just All the animals. I think uh, just <laughs> fun guitar is, uh, is an animal lover. Mm -hmm. So, all right. Absolute favorite question on an Ask RNA so far? Oh, gosh. I like the questions about how either we started RNA music because we've had a couple of those in the past. Because mm -hmm. um, most people don't know. And how we met. Yeah. Those are good. Those are good questions. Um, I like the questions that are more personal. So you can get to know us better. Like, you know, what's our favorite movie? Or what's our, you know, typical night out together? Or stuff like that. Um... So any of any of those questions, I can't name. How do you stay married so long and stay yes. happy? <laughs> do y'all really like each other? There was one question. I think it was like three or four years ago when we first started RNA Music, and they were like, "Are you really this happy together?" Or when the cameras turn off. You remember that? Oh yeah, yeah. Or when the cameras turn off, are y'all like at each other's throat or something like that? Because this can't be real or something like that. Because I think the, the thumbnail was like, like fight. And it yes. Is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that ah, tooth. <laughs> going no uh and we are we're like this all the time we were just having this conversation this morning when we woke morning. up yeah how? i was like man i love you so much that's like, oh, you think too. other people like after 20 years are more in love after 21 years than 20 like yeah. i feel bad for them if they don't i know it's I sad do. and we were talking about why that happens I'm why like, do we still love you why do we love each other more after 20 years then? yes and we were talking about how because it's because beard. yes it's because of his beard 100% facial hair is the winner 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 chicken dinner um it's because most people don't start off as in love like true love not infatuation or twitter pated or you know like I like your flesh you like my flesh type stuff it's like who he really is like in here I'm in love with that <laughs> and that's always there now some people it does die because of certain situations it gets smaller and smaller like the opposite Grinch you know like it goes from big to small but you that's my job hard. yes I did not don't say that <laughs> he used to have Grinch he's talking about the Grinch not no, no. me not you no, no. Um, he uh, but I okay. think a lot of people because it's my job to not rely on what's on inside of him to make me happy I'm happy because I find joy in everything despite whatever mood he's in or whatever he's doing or what he's accomplished or whatever job he has because those things come and go and those things so I don't put all my emotions into that and so um but I like to help him feel good about himself I love it I love helping him and loving on him and stuff like that so I was like um questions that glean towards that mm -hmm. because most people don't hear that out in the world and I like whenever you know as people who have been married over 20 years now um, can show younger people 
and people who haven't been married or newlyweds or whatever, how, or even just business partners, mm -hmm. how to do it and be happy. So I love questions that relate to that kind of thing. Yeah, I agree with that. Because I can't remember every question we've had in the last oh, how gosh. many, I don't even remember how many so years we've been many. doing this. It's been three or four years of yeah. Ask RNA. Yeah. It's been nine years of RNA music videos. Mm -hmm. But, uh, no, wait, let's see. Five years? Maybe five years. Four or five years of doing the Ask RNA, FAQ yeah. Fridays, whatever. Mm -hmm. But uh, I agree with Angela. I, I kind of like those ones where you get a little more deeper look into our psyche. Mm -hmm. As a human, you know. Because gear is gear. Gear is yeah. just wooden strings and metal and tubes and speakers and, you know. Yeah. And that's fun because I love that. I'm into gear. But, yeah. Uh, and it's the purpose of why we're here and what, why we have our business. But. Yeah. Getting, getting to know people is... It's a lot more interesting to me than getting to know gear. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There you go. Uh, Ryan, have you used the TV Jones Filtertrons and what do you make of them? Uh, I don't think so. I do have one guitar here in the shop over there. Everybody thinks it's a Fender Carbonita, but it's it was a custom build for uh, a friend of mine, and he's got it on consignment here at the shop that does have the TV Jones pickups in it. I keep saying, I need to do a video of Ken's guitar. So people, cause they always ask about it, and it's got TV Jones pickups, which I haven't really ever played very much. And I keep not making the... I did restring it, though. Oh, Like, okay. last week, I restring I was like, I need to do a video with this guitar. Man, these strings are crusty. Let's restring it. And I did, and then <laughs> the video. So probably <laughs> at some point in 2020, I'll do a video on this telly with TV we'll Jones. We'll put it on the it. list. We'll put it on the list. After the, -growing the, list. After the glary guitars, probably before the glary guitars yes. video, maybe. Yeah. But, uh, all right, and final question. Is there a good zoo in Texas? And if his so, final question. <laughs> his final question from Just Fun Guitar. Is there a good zoo in Texas? If so, have you visited it? Is there a good zoo in Texas? They're, like the they're, best zoos in the world. <laughs> there are, are Texas, really good guys. zoos in Texas. I think the Fort Worth Multiple. Zoo is pretty good. Probably the most famous is the Fort Worth Zoo. Dallas Zoo. Dallas Zoo? You think it's I don't know. more than Fort Worth? I've San been Antonio. Fort was it San Antonio or Waco that has a really killer... I think San, it was San Antonio. It's San Antonio. Like, Waco is more like a Tyler's, the Tyler Zoo. Tyler Zoo. Tyler Zoo is good too. They're, they've upped their game quite a bit. Yeah. Even yeah. towns like, like Tyler's got how many The well, Dallas Zoo is small considering it's the Dallas Zoo. Yeah. It's not a big zoo. But it's really nice. And it's really pretty. Mm -hmm. And they did a really... The layout is easy to manage and get around. And plus they have the tram that goes around the whole entire zoo that you can get on and look down into the zoo from an aerial mm -hmm. view. Which is really cool. Um, and a train. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like the Fort Worth Zoo is bigger or more famous than the Dallas Zoo. Yeah. But they always say the Dallas Fort Worth Zoo. And it's not the Dallas Fort Worth Zoo. There's the Dallas Zoo and the Fort Worth Zoo. Mm -hmm. If I'm not mistaken. I think that's right. And you can actually get on the train, the train train in Dallas to go to the Fort Worth Zoo. Because that's what we did when I was a little girl. Mm -hmm. in, in, I don't think I've, in Dallas. I don't think I've been to the Fort Worth Zoo. I've been yeah. to the Dallas Zoo. Yeah, I think I've been to the Fort Worth Zoo because we drove, we fl drew, we rode a, like a real like train. Like, like a real a, train. Yes. Like Amtrak. A, yes, an Amtrak train. And that was my first time on a, like an Amtrak to I've go been to on a big, big train. Fort Worth Zoo. And the Fort Worth Zoo is big. Yeah, yeah. It's supposed to, I think it's like twice the size of the Dallas Zoo. Yeah. Something like that. I we never, might be mistaken. We should go. We really we should. should. Go. We're bad Texans. Yeah. We've been to the Dallas one. Have we been to the Waco Zoo? No. The Waco Zoo is literally down the, literally down the street from Magnolia. <laughs> A little Chris Traeger there. Literally down the street from Magnolia. It's and the produce. same exit. As uh, Magnolia. Yeah. You have to go through down, old downtown Waco, I think, to get to it. I feel like... I believe so. I, I'm pretty sure I've been to SeaWorld. I've never been to SeaWorld. In San Antonio. I was little, so I don't remember yeah. much about it. We, it's we, pretty young. Of course, we have Six Flags. Mm-hmm. So, and that's not a zoo, but it's a, it's an amusement park. But we kind have a of couple us. of Six Flags. Mm -hmm. we six, have flags six, <laughs> six Flags. Six Flags. Six Flags. Six Flag. Because six flags. Six flags. Plural. Yes. Um, I've been to the Tyler Zoo a bunch, which is... Yeah. Tyler's... How many people is Tyler? 100,000 or 300,000? It's like 175,000. 170,000 people in Tyler, Texas, which is not too far away from Canton. They have a zoo, which is not huge. 
It's not um, huge. It's not huge, but it is a zoo. And, yeah. you know, we went there quite a bit. <laughs> it is a zoo. <laughs> it are a zoo. Yes. They have elephants, you know? Yeah. They, they have, have rhinoceros. Yes, they have tigers, all, all this stuff. Lions and tigers. And a liger. No. Bears. I don't think they have any bears. Yeah, you just go I think the they do. see some bears. Do they? Mm-hmm. Oh, they probably do. We've been to that one a bunch, but I don't know that it's world famous or anything. Mm -mm. Um, the Dallas Zoo is one you would have heard of. We lived in Tulsa, which mm -hmm. is in Oklahoma, which is not in Texas. That's... Texas Backyard has a zoo. And the Tulsa Zoo was nice. We went there many times when we lived in Tulsa. So. Oh. 104,000 people, Tyler. See? Mm -hmm. How's it? Yeah. Waco has 136,000, so oh. it's not too much bigger. Barely bigger. Yeah, there's a lot of towns with, you know, a population of 100,000 people will have a zoo. Mm -hmm. Like it's a thing here, I guess. Yeah. Let's have a zoo. Yeah. <laughs> we have a zoo at our house. We sure do. A menagerie. A menagerie. All right. <laughs> So there you go. Now, if any of you other folks, fine folks watching this, have been to any other zoos in Texas, let us know. Has Houston got a zoo? I have a feeling it would be scary. Yeah, like, would not be go like, to Houston I Zoo. Know, I, don't <laughs> I don't know if I want to go to that zoo in Houston. The man. animals might be packing. It might be like <laughs> you get shot by a bear. Some caps. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that, poor Houston. That, that tiger looks nice. suspicious. <laughs> that's not. Nice. I'm just saying. Poor that's, Houston. That's my guess. It could be completely wrong. It's probably the finest <laughs> zoo in. Texas. I, doubt it. I don't think so. I don't think it is because I've never heard of it. Yeah, I do either. All right, thanks, Chris. <laughs> Just fine guitar. Next question, Adam Lynch, Ryan. I got a solo six custom this week. I will post it on the Sun Sunday. What are you playing thread on Facebook? Yeah, mm -hmm. I usually do a question on our Instagram, and there aren't any Facebook, mm -hmm. which you should go follow us there. It's like, what are you playing today? And mm -hmm. I got a picture of the guitar that I'm playing. It's the guitar of the day for Sundays. So Adam is going to mm -hmm. share his solo sick custom. I'm Sweet. excited. Can't wait to see it, man. Do you think solderless kits are worth the money for the time they save when swapping out pickups or other parts? Question two. So I don't leave out Angela. Thank you. If you had to crochet a baby Yoda, stitch pat what stitch pattern would you use? Merry Christmas. Welcome. All right. So, you know... One of the things I really like, phone. Let me go answer that. I answered the phone. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, what I was saying was, so one of the things I really like about EMG pickups. One of the things? One of the things I like about one them the is things. that when I am, if I want to swap EMGs on my guitars, which yeah. I have multiple guitars with the EMGs, uh -huh. is that it is just plug and play. Like I just unplug them. Plug in the other ones, and they're mm -hmm. good to go. There's no soldering involved yeah. with that. So for me, <clears throat> for all of my EMG guitars, mm -hmm. and EMG makes a lot of different pickups, and I can just <coughs> plug them in. Super great, mm -hmm. super easy. So if that's something you're doing a lot of, or if you have one guitar that you really like to do a lot of pickup swapping for tone samples and such, mm -hmm. it would definitely be worth it. Because to me, it shaves off a lot of time, yeah. you know, on doing pickup swaps. Right. If that's your thing. Mm -hmm. now, I just get a new guitar with different pickups in it, but <laughs> you could just buy another guitar. Yeah. But I, I think I think they're, they're great. Um, I haven't bought like another aftermarket kit. I know you can do that to where you could sort of do any pickups that you want. But uh, that is one of the things I love about EMG is, is it's so easy to change out components because it is solderless oh. in a sense. Um, and Angela, if you had to crochet a baby Yoda, what stitch pattern would you use? Well, the stitch um, type of stitch I would use would be a single crochet stitch so that it would be really tight and not loose so the stuffing will stay inside. And the pattern I would use, I would make up my own. <clears throat> the actual pattern I would make up my own. I usually look at the picture of whatever animated character or movie character or whatever I'm looking at and <clears throat> or cartoon character. <clears throat> Excuse me. Bless you. Or cartoon character. And I would um, look at it and I would think, okay, this is how much I would do that. And that's how much I would do that. And it has a little collar, has a little robe, has little fingers, you know. <laughs> I would figure out like how to do the tip, the little 
fingernails and and then do the wide almost like it would be an ear uh, you know with a traditional like ear but it would be smaller so the fingers and join them together to make a hand and an arm and then join it together so that's how i would fabricate it from scratch yes in my mind i can start to see it and know how, how many stitches and big and i can i'll just write it down and um of course you can buy like doll eyes for the you know the pu the irises, irises and all that stuff so um but the stitch the st actual stitch i would use would be single crochet the pattern i would use would be whatever i made up in my head not somebody else's yeah there are ones out there because they've been floating around. Yes. You see them on Facebook. Like, oh, look at this. Man. But I love, the, I love the challenge of coming up with my own versus having to purchase somebody else's pattern. Because a lot of times they, they'll say most crocheters, 99% of all crocheters, they come up with patterns. And then they say, you can, when you make whatever you're crocheting out of the pattern that I've provided, you can sell that product because you did the work. And yeah, created you it. made it you made it just don't sell the pattern because they created that that's their trademarked property is the actual pattern is the actual written out pattern which i understand that's 100 percent because yeah. i had to purchase it so i'm not going to turn around and do that they have to come up with their own but people can buy the made actual made product from me mm -hmm. that but that's too sense. much work it's a lot. It's, it's a lot easier to sell a pattern than it is to, to <clears throat> like sit down and hand craft. Because mm -hmm. you're literally getting just a ball of yarn and turning it into like your sculpt. You're sculpting basically with a hook and thread. Mm -hmm. You know. And you can't make them. You can't. People don't want to pay. <laughs> mm -mm. Like. Yeah, I'll make you one. $150. Yes, and depending on how big you actually want one. Now, if you wanted me to create, I don't like doing stuff that's small. Because I can't see it roomy. because it's too like the crochet and the hook and finding the exact colors to do it is just too much. But like a bigger one like this, my dolls usually start at like fifty bucks. Mm -hmm. Because in my mind, I'm thinking like crocheting a ball, crocheting a body, doing this, doing that. I added up like that's basically a ball. That's basically like you know something cylinder else. yeah and i can like add it up so it starts at like 50 the more the details like if you wanted a lightsaber if you wanted to hold it let him hold like a yoda lightsaber or something like that because i know it's not yoda mm -hmm. but if you wanted him to hold yoda's lightsaber and i can crochet yoda's lightsaber then that would add up like 20 dollars mm -hmm. more per whatever or a christmas hat or something like that, you know, him wearing a Santa hat or give him a little Santa beard to where you can remove, <clears throat> like I can get it to where he can remove off and on his ears and he looks like Santa. Like little things like that. You know what I want for my next crochet doll. Okay. I mean car uh, action figure. Yes. Crochet action figure. I know what I want. Okay. Are you taking orders? Sure. From me? Yes, okay. I'll take orders from you. Okay. Do I have to pay for it? Yes. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the question, Adam. Thanks for the question, Adam. That's yeah. what I meant to say. Oh my gosh. <laughs> a long morning. Next question. Senator Dwarf, which one of your guitars would you be able to complete the Kessel Run in within 12 parsecs? More Star Wars. Hashtag beards. Hashtag not my Luke. Hashtag not my wars. Hashtag Disney Wars. <laughs> All the hashtags, Senator Dwarf. Um, I immediately thought of my Gibson Explorer. I did too. You were in my brain. I, I did. Because I thought, hmm... It wasn't really like which guitar can I play on the fastest? Yes. But actually, that one's pretty fast, I have to say, because the neck's pretty slim. Mm -hmm. I was like, that one looks like a spaceship. Yes. The Gibson Explorer. And it's Explorer, like space exploration. To boldly go. Oh. <laughs> Don't mix universes. Exactly. But uh, yeah, yeah. Crossing over franchises. Definitely my 91 Gibson Explorer with diamond plate, mm -hmm. armor plating on it. Yeah. Would be the Kessel Run guitar. Yeah. Easy decision. So, thank you. <laughs> Great question. <laughs> Next question. Bubba Fang, which I think is Tracy Johnson. He changed his name. Uh -huh. uh, he said that, hey, I'm back with a new name. I'm pretty sure it's Tracy Johnson. But it's Bubba Fang. All right. Question, Ryan. With the current trend of solid state amplifiers being as good as tube slash valve type, mm -hmm. Fender's new Tone Masters, would you buy and try a Mesa Boogie or for myself a Marshall? Do you, do you see the new Silver Mountain C1 Schecters? 
he hears rainbows, man of the silver mountain cranked loudly and his dad singing Dio. Will there be a single cut in that cool finish, the Schechter Silver Mountains? Uh, how do you feel about horror movies? We like some and we also like Deadpool. <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> Hashtag KTMA. Awesome. Hashtag love life authentically. Okay. Now, the current trend of solid state amplifiers, are they as good as tube amps though? Are they? I have no idea. I'm not convinced that they actually are. Are they better than they've ever been? Sure. Absolutely. Uh, are they as good as actual tube amps? I don't think they are. I don't think they respond quite the same. I've had some newer solid state amps. I'm like, it's good. Mm -hmm. Sounds way better than the solid state amp I had as a kid, for mm -hmm. sure. <laughs> Does not sound as good as my Mesa Boogie hashtag. The Boogie. The boogie. So I would still I would still go with the Mesa. If it were me. And it is. So I will. <laughs> so uh, I'm not convinced that any of the solid states really can sit. If you put them side by side and crank them up in a room playing. Uh, I think you'll still find, you know, your your Mesa or your Marshall. I'm not I don't I'm not in love with Marshalls, but mm -hmm. I still think if you are in love with Marshalls I think you'll still find that the full-on tube ones cranked will perform better. There's something visceral about it, and the response yeah. from when you play, and <clears throat> you know. Yeah. I think there's still a difference, and they haven't. They haven't. I don't think they can overcome that yet. Yeah. Technologically, I have seen the new Silver Mountain C1 Checkers. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I do not know if they're going to make a single cut like a Solo 2 or Solo 6 version of it, it would be super sick if they did because I'm all about the single cuts. I don't know that they're going to. I'm all about the super sick. Super sick. I wish they would. That would be awesome. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know. They probably will. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe. If it if it gets popular enough, enough people demand it. They'll probably make an E1 version, which is their Explorer shape, before they yeah. do a single cut, though, which is kind of weird. Yeah. The the E1s have been very popular for Schecter lately since they introduced it. Yeah. And, you know, they put some cool finishes on those. Yeah. So, I don't know if they will or not. But, uh, all right. And then the last question from Bubba Fang. How do you feel about horror movies? Horror! Oh, the horror! Oh, man. You mean like Star Wars Episode Eight? That was a horror movie. Mm. I did not like that. Oh, show. Mm. Were you talking about like Nightmare on Elm Street? Yeah, I don't do those. I don't either. I'm not. I never have. I've watched. I watched the first Nightmare on Elm Street, like not too long after it was, you know, when it was released on everything and it was out on playing on television. Like that's when I watched it. I think I might have been like in the seventh grade. Sixth I've never grade. seen them all I, the way through. Not all the way through. I've, I've never. Seen I didn't finish it. And I changed them. the channel. Um, I watched Children of the Corn, the first one, like like this, <laughs> and then changing the because it was came on channel like Channel Eleven Dallas station Channel Eleven on Saturday mornings after all the cartoons were done, mm -hmm. it would have like the news or like you know Texas, mm -hmm. you know like we're going through Texas and showing you all the great places. Texas to come Country visit. Reporter. Yes, and then after that was over. From 1 to 5, before the evening news started coming on, they played horror films. That's crazy. They did. Like, all the time. And that's when I got my horror, like, fix. Like, I watched movies. Like, Child's Play. <laughs> I watched, um... Uh, like I said, Children of the Corn. I want, my mom is going to kill me. She's like, she's going to be like, what? You left me um, alone with the TV as a babysitter, mom. <laughs> it's really your fault. I was in junior high. Um, I didn't need a babysitter. Um, but I like, like Nightmare on Elm Street, the very first Friday the 13th movie, like the very first ones, like the yeah, first, yeah. first. Um, and I didn't finish them. I would like, you know, cause we had the UH. UHF yeah, rotary VHF dial or whatever. on your TV. The, yeah, we had the no click. Huh. Wait, maybe it's commercial. You know, it click and it was a commercial break, and I'm like, okay, good. I'll sit through the commercial break, and then like, huh. and I turn it down, like I wouldn't hear like the background music or anything, or the person like you know the suspenseful stuff. But um, I like more like 
Nowadays, I I can watch some scary movies, like su Supernatural type movies, or the TV show Supernatural. Of course, I haven't watched like the last two seasons of Supernatural because nope. it got a little bit too... Too intense. Too stupid. It was stupid. Oh. It really, it got stupid to me. It, I mean, it was already dorky, but it, then it was like, really, why? That's you not run even short on ideas. So you got to <clears throat> jump a shark. Like every here. single episode was jumping the shark, but um, but then like like The Walking Dead stuff that has like deeper like storylines, less mm -hmm. about the actual gore and mm -hmm. more about the story, like the human aspect of what would you do in this situation? Who would you be, and how would you react. develop and react through this whole situation? I like stuff like that more than anything. I'm not into gore. I no, I cannot. Like everybody now, watching the dead. saw and stuff yeah, yeah, like yeah. that. I can't. Mm -hmm. oh, never, never have never seen any of it. Or stuff. you know, Final Destination. <laughs> I've watched all the Final Destinations. Are those horror movies though? I wouldn't. I would call those more suspense. It's gory, but not drawn out because you're just watching accidents happen. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Some of them are like ridiculously. I should not have seen that. Right. I don't need to see that. But they're dumb. <laughs> it's it's just, it's almost like over the top stupid. You know, it's not, I don't know. It's, mm -hmm. It was, it's more, it was more suspenseful to me than it was scary. It wasn't scary. Yeah. I don't so, like horror, horror movies. <clears throat> now I like, you know, like uh, Predator, but I don't really consider that a horror movie as more of an action movie. Yeah, sci-fi. Sci-fi, you know, and like Aliens. Or like Alien, even. Yeah, no, it's it was more sci-fi. Yeah, I think of that as more of a sci-fi than like... It's not really horror like, you know, Nightmare on Elm Street or... Uh, yeah, Nightmare on Elm Street was a special kind of... Or creepy. Friday the 13th, that, yeah, that type or of like stuff. Yeah, Hellraiser or something yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. like, I've never watched any of them. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't really consider like Predator or Predators mm -hmm. or Aliens... That. You know, yeah. I think of those as a more like action. Sci-fi action. Sci-fi action type mm -hmm. stuff. Because there's a lot of shooting. Yeah. It's a nice text name. But no, I'm not really that yeah. much into that. And over cool. the years, it's kind of been like, eh. Do I really want to have this in my brain? Do I really want to, like, use up parts of my brain? Is Blade a horror this? movie? Yes. I would call it a horror movie. Is it? Yeah. I think it was an action Vampires movie. are always horror movies. I know. I like vampire movies, though. Yeah. And like, now, Twilight was not a horror movie. Are you that, sure? Yeah. No, I mean, it was pretty hor horrible. Horry, horrible. <laughs> it was a horror as in horrible, but yeah. not horror as in terrifying. You didn't, See, I was didn't have nightmares. I think the first Twilight. the first horror movie I watched was Fright Night. Oh, yeah. And that messed me up because I was a little kid. I was like, oh my God. Yeah, no, that was that a little was scary. scary. For, for, for what a little it was. Kid. Yeah, for what it was. For a little at kid time. at the time. Mm -hmm. But now, like, I kind of yeah. like vampire movies. I, but I, I still think of Blade as, like, an action, an yeah, action of martial like arts type because yeah. he's, like, kicking their butts, you know. Mm -hmm. But even, uh, what was the one with the, the vampires and the werewolves? Uh, uh, Underworld? Yeah, Underworld. Underworld had horror elements, but I, th I still same thing. I thought not, it was yeah, more of an much, action though. movie. It wasn't like a bunch of people getting ripped apart, like, like focusing on that part. It was more, most about the guns. Yeah, it was very like The Matrix, but with vampires. Yes. So, yeah. I kind of like that, vampire werewolf stuff, but it's got to be mixed with a lot of action, and not just mm -hmm. like... Ripping people apart. Yeah. Like Bram Stoker's Dracula. That was like... Yeah, that was gross. That was like... Ugh. Yeah, I don't like that. Horror movie. It gives me a bad feeling. Though. Yeah, it gives me a bad vibe. I went and saw... I think it was my senior year in high school. Junior or senior year, we went to see Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. Yeah. That was scary. Yeah. Uh, Robert De Niro was Frankenstein, mm -hmm. the monster. Yep, not I mean, Doctor Frankenstein. Not Doctor Frankenstein. Frankenstein. <laughs> yeah. But like the monster in a moment. If you, I mean, it's an old movie. If you haven't seen it, it's on you. Um, because I'm about to spoil the part. But whenever he spoiler warning. Whenever she's asleep in the bed and he's been like coming after her because he wants her to be like his bride, basically. And she's like laying on the bed. And she opens up her eyes and he's like right above her bed. <laughs> you know. Have you seen it? I don't think so. Oh my god! Spoilers, things a little. So he's right, like he's like pinned himself like up against like the beams of the bed, like you know, because they're beams that like, right, run. Right. And so he has himself like braced up, and 
And so they're like, go in there, we're gonna keep you safe. And she's laying in the bed, she finally like calms herself down because the Frankenstein monster is after her, mm -hmm. wanting her to be the bride. And because uh, he's very smart, because they mm -hmm. put like a brain of like a smart man in him. So smart he's man. very until he's very intelligent. And so he, anyways, he lands on top of her and you think, oh dear God, is this, you know, this is it. And it was, cause he, she's just like, no, you know, and he goes like this and he jams his hand into her chest and pulls out her heart. Like he's like, now, and now you, you have to be mine. Like, and that was it. Like, it was just this most like, oh my God, what did I just see? And you're in the theater, so it's not like you can just turn it off and run into the other room and like take a breather. You just have to let it play out. And she ends up being like his bride. Of, like he raises her from the dead and she becomes the bride of Frankenstein's monster. Yeah, man. That's terrible. Yeah. Merry Christmas. <laughs> you filthy animal. <laughs> Oh, okay. Well, there you go. Uh, what's today? The 20th? It is the 20th. It's yes. my friend Steve's birthday. Happy birthday, Stephen. Yes. Stephen. Um, yeah. And we may or may not see you before Christmas. So if not, Merry Christmas. Yes. And uh, We'll vlog Saturday. Yeah, we'll vlog this Saturday. But that vlog ain't coming out for like Like two seven months. months. <laughs> I'm working on it. He'll, go to the vlog channel. He'll get there. Eventually get there. All right, so thank you guys for all the questions this, for this week. If you have questions for next time, please type it down below. Yes. That'll be probably for the last Ask RNA before the year 2020. Yes. Year Super exciting. So the last RNA of 2000, ask, the last Ask RNA of 2019 will be next week. So get your questions in for that, and we should have a good time answering those. Mm -hmm. uh, secret hashtag of the day. If you watch this whole video, I think this one's really long now. Mm -hmm. It'll take me forever to edit. From the beginning to the end, you watch this whole video, you are a super champ. Yes. And a legend. And if you watched it, we have a little little secret thing between us, just Angela and I and you guys, that if you watch the whole thing, type in the secret hashtag and we'll know you watched the whole thing. And what should it be for oh, goodness. Uh, uh, today? The secret hashtag today is hashtag Kessel Run. In honor of the Star Wars movie, I'm going to go see either... Tonight, tomorrow, or the next day, and be in absolute hatred with, I bet. Yes, and I can't wait to hear all about it. I'll have the house all to myself. I'll get some writing done and not having my childhood ruined until they get back. <laughs> it's already all been ruined. Because I, I told them they have to tell me everything that happens. I don't when they think come they back. can ruin it. I think JJ's going to try to save it, but I think it's too late. I think it's too late yes. to save it, JJ. My friend uh, Tara has already, they went to see it last night. Uh huh. At the midnight showing, yeah. you know, they brought their kids and everything. They stayed up and went, uh -huh. or the ten o'clock showing, and uh, she was like, "Hopefully, we won't be disappointed." <laughs> and so I'm gonna message her. I'm like, "Okay, spoil the whole movie for me. Go for it, because I'm not gonna go see it." So. Don't spoil it for me. I'm gonna see. I won't, but I'm gonna I'm gonna message her and have her spoil it for me, so mm -hmm. I'll know what. No, you don't want me to spoil it for you? Okay, you can spoil it for okay. me. Okay, I won't spoil. I don't want someone else to tell you. Okay, I'm gonna be the one to tell. You. Okay. Anyway. I'll let you do that. So we'll see you guys in the next Ask RNA. Until then, keep the music alive. Don't forget it. Music needs you. And you need the music. And we need to keep it alive for the next generation. And not rip its heart out. Mm. Keep the music alive. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you guys next week. Don't forget to get your Ask RNA t-shirts from our Teespring da, 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 da. store. Description down below. I gotta make some money so I can buy Glary's guitar for 85 bucks. Yes. I think so. I'm going to go home and watch Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to stay up here and edit for forever. Yes. Well, we have students at a couple hours. All right. So. See you guys later. Bye. Bye.